Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's actually calculate the currents in each of the three branches. Let's assume that the current entering the branch point is equal to 1 amp and we're going to determine I1, I2 and I3. Now here are the three equations we derived in the previous video, so let's see how well they work. I3 is going to be equal to I times, now we have the product of R1 times R2 which is 2 times 4. <clears throat> And divide that by what we have in the denominator, R1 times R2, which is 2 times 4, plus R1 times R3, which is 2 times 8, Oop, 2 times 8, like this, plus R2, R3, which is 4 times 8, like this. And if we then simplify that, we get I times, in the numerator we get 8, in the denominator we get 8 plus 16 plus 32, which is equal to I times 8 over, that would be 48 plus 8, that's 56. And 8 goes into 56 7 times, so that's basically that it's equal to 1 7 the current coming into the branch point. So that makes sense, kind of, because we have the largest resistor in the bottom branch, so we would expect the smallest portion of the current to go to the bottom and greater portions to go to the top two. Intuitively, since this is half the resistance, we expect twice the current to flow through this resistor right here. So we expect two-sevenths of the current to go through here. And since this is one-quarter the resistance of this branch, we expect four times as much current to flow th through there, so four sevenths. So actually at this point, we can already assume that the current through here will be two sevenths and the current through there will be four sevenths. One seventh plus two sevenths plus sevenths, first four sevenths, is seven sevenths or the total current. But let's just see if the equations do work out that way and we get the same result. So here we have I2, which is equal to I times R1 times R3, which R1 times R3, which would be 2 times 8. And in the denominator, we'll get the exact same number. We'll get 56 in the denominator because, again, it'll be the same R1 times R2, R1 times R3, and R2 times R3, just like we have over there. So we get the same denominator. So in this case, 8 and 56, that's 1 7 times 2. So this indeed is indeed 2 7 times I1, so I guess I, uh, or I, I should say. So this is 2 over 7 times the total current. And for the, the, the top branch, I1, that's equal to I times, in this case it's R2 times R3, so that would be 4 times 8 divided by 56, so that would be indeed 1 7 times 4, or 4 7 I, just like what we predicted. So these are the three currents in the three branches, Notice once you calculate it for the first branch, it's a lot easier to do it for the second branch and the third branch because you already know what the denominator is equal to. So it's not that difficult of a method and it's actually quite quick. That's how it's done.